Hey, Ed here. Hey, this is cool. I made a new cement battery. All right. <clears throat> this new cement battery, I've got a new chemical inside of it. I'm using Portland cement, sand, <clears throat> cement all. <clears throat> and we've got graphene oxide inside there and <clears throat> some powdered charcoal. Also, I'm using well, where did it where did it go? Silica fume. Alright. You can see it's bounced back to 1.16 volts. All right, <clears throat> it is wet right now, but the other battery that I made was four years old. I added water to it. It's still as hard as a rock. <clears throat> the water goes in, the microscopic pours, and voila, you've got your current flow. Simple, that's friggin' all get out. All right, so what we got here, as you can see, I'm gonna show you the current here gonna touch it now all right <clears throat> pops up that's a lot of current for a cement battery almost 20 milliamps okay what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna apply about 5 volts onto it and we're gonna watch this it's drawing about a half an amp into it right now <clears throat> and it's 4.49 volts all right, <clears throat> we've charged it up. Oh, what now? 10 seconds? 15 seconds? Okay, let's take that off. Drops down to 1.5. Now let's hook it up. It's going through this little drone motor here. All right, let's check this out. It's a slow dropping current uh, voltage here's my current somewhere near 40 milliamps and it's kind of wobbling I don't know if that's my connections or what <clears throat> stable 30 milliamps now dropping down it does that pulse thing I don't know what that's all about it's taking a long time to drop down Little drone motor still going to town. <clears throat> You'll be able to look at the timestamp and figure out how much time it took to discharge this. But this is a galvanic. Um, process right here because there is copper there's about <clears throat> three feet of copper coiled up inside a paper towel tube and insulated on the bottom so it can't touch this is aluminum flashing stuck down inside a can so it's just basically around there so I have a large surface area and the chemicals I told you about <clears throat> All right. The interesting phenomenon is that once it gets down below one volt, it starts to move down to about half volt. Also, with the quick set um, cement all in this mixture, it'll set fast. So that could be what's causing it to, to move down quicker because of the uh, setting of it. <clears throat> the real test is going to be all right whatever time that was right there 15 second charge and then that okay cool thing is it charges back up let's stick it back on all right still pulling about a half an amp at five volts you can see and i guess this is actually helping to form the 
um, direction of the current flow in the concrete <clears throat> as it charges the two plates. All right, I'll take this off, go back to here. There we go again. It drops really, really slow. I'm just wondering if the graphene oxide mixed in with it is causing um, more of an electrical connection inside the concrete. <clears throat> now if this hardens up similar to my other one, this one right here, You know, with one piece of um, aluminum and about a foot of co um, copper down, coiled up down inside there. And it's just as hard as a rock. And the uh, thing is, I put about uh, half a cup of uh, water down inside here and it's absorbed it. I don't know where it goes because it's inside there. <clears throat> So it evidently holds it inside. So a real good idea about this is to create some sort of a statue, put it outside, have a uh, solar panel feed it, and when it rains, it gathers more moisture, and your lights come on. It could be used in um, third world countries. It could be used outside uh, in your gardens, things like that. Still running this little motor here. So if you were to use some solar panels like these right here <clears throat> to charge up during the day, I know definitely it would run a LED, a set of LED lights for a pretty good while. And if you had several of these configuration is inside of some some kind of uh, unit it would stay and run for a pretty good while see we're down to 1.1 volt It's dropping slower so forming this thing up is uh, allowing it to stay much longer much longer than you would expect this thing seems to run for a long time and right here is proof that the copper and the aluminum don't erode because it, this one still works and the copper is still fine. Barely any patina on the copper, hardly anything on the aluminum, and it's encased. So how many could you use to create, okay, it just went off. That could be for some other reason. Let's see. Yeah, it must have been some sort of a disconnect or something because it's still running. It's dropping down faster. It gets to a certain point, then it'll just want to drop faster. I don't know if that's bubbles inside this thing <clears throat> or if it's, uh, you know, what it is. I'm not very sure. But like I was saying, this being hard as a rock, lasts a long time. How many of these could you put in parallel to provide enough current to last a